Live. Hey, everyone. This is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. I am here with Guess Who? It is Mitch Thomas of Sound Toys, one of my favorite pro audio brands, one of my favorite dudes. He just put on a totally super fun presentation workshop on mixing and remixing with Sound Toys, Effects Rack, and all of their cool stuff. So, Mitch, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, it's a blast. I'm, um, as I, I think I said in the presentation, sorry we couldn't all be there and hang again, uh, but this is cool too. This is a, a new, brave new world, right? Indeed, yeah. Well, you did great. <laughs> uh, I'm glad we get to see you inside your studio. Man, so many synths. Uh, a good amount of paraphernalia, more synths than paraphernalia, so you know you're living the life. So this is good stuff. Um, I don't even want to get go down the rabbit hole of asking about each and every one of those synths because we could talk about it forever. <laughs> I would love to yeah. keep it focused a little bit on sound toys. So you guys, this is a live chat. So feel free to type your questions down into the chat box uh, down there. And also uh, just a quick reminder, if you checked out the workshop and you dig checking out some of the sound toy stuff and you haven't tried it out, you can try out anything they make for free over at soundtoys.com. You get a 30 day free trial and that's fully functional. You can print the stuff, use it on your number one hit records, never pay them a dime. Uh, maybe that would pull at your heart, you know, for ages, but they wouldn't hit you up for any cash. Um, and uh, after the 30 days, you're probably just going to buy the whole thing because, man, it's one of those things that comes up. I've got to say, Mitch, in all of these MixCon masterclasses we put on and we get to see how people work under the hood, it's almost never that there's no sound toys plugins in them. It seems like anyone who's doing this at a high level has the whole bundle. I think the ones that I see the most often are I'm going to say decapitator. I see a lot of little plate. Yep. I see a lot of, what do you think are some of the most uh, popular ones that you see coming up again and again, when you see other people working out there in the field, mixing in particular? Well, they, they've shifted over the years just in terms of what goes out the door for us. But mm -hmm. as far as what's in the mixes, yeah, it's a de decapitator and echo boy. Yeah. Uh, little plate has certainly come along since its introduction uh, because it's simplicity and it just sounds great. So simple and so straightforward. Uh, little Alter Boy is huge now. It's popping up all over the place uh, because, again, simple, but just a great sound. Uh, uh, Mr. Pensado is a huge fan of Devil Lodge Deluxe. Mm -hmm. he, says he, he says he puts it on everything, including a salad. So, uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so, but, the, you know, Radiator pops up from time to time, Crystallizer Filter. It depends on what you're doing kind of music-wise. I'm a synth head, so I... You know, like I saw my demo, I'm constantly turning toward uh, crystallizer and the and the more uh, out there kinds of things. But uh, um, but they all, you know, they all have their space and their place and uh, their fans. So. Yeah. Well, we're waiting for some more questions to come in, and guys, you can type your questions right down there. We're doing this in real time, so we're happy to answer any questions you may have about sound toys or just mixing and effects use in general. If you have general questions that uh, we can weigh in on. Um, Marcelo Suarez says, Devilock is just amazing. And Sebastian says, Mitch, uh, I thanks so much for your creativity. I want to ask you about your take on Sound Toys future projects. Can you be a little more specific on that question, Sebastian? What exactly are you looking for uh, for there? Um, here is a good question that Jack Roy is leading off with. And this is not a Sound Toys specific question. We welcome Sound Toys specific questions, but we'll do our best with any question. And this is a good one. Jack Roy asks, is it realistic to pursue music production as a main source of income? This is not sound toy specific, but I would say arguably Mitch and I both make our living off of music production. Are both of us making 100% of our living just producing tracks? No, but do we get to do that kind of stuff? Yes. Do we make a living in audio? Yes. So even if you were to get all of these skills and then not realize your dream of becoming the rock star producer. There's so many ways to make a living in music production and live a happy life that affords you. Look at all the keyboards behind Mitch. Does this see, seem like a happy guy? Even if he's not personally, you know, number one in the top 40 with his uh, Devo resonance mashups or whatever he, he's doing. So uh, <laughs> what's your take on that? Is it possible? I think Mitch there is living proof that it's possible in a variety of different ways. So um, how did you, at what point, Mitch, did you in your life start making a full-time income off of music and music production stuff? When did that come together in your life? 
Wait, when did I give up my dream of becoming the rock star producer uh, slash <laughs> new wave oh, superstar? That's specifically not the question I'm asking. We've, we've all had the rock star dream. Most of us have in this industry. Um, you still but, have to dream the dream and do this, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still dreaming it. I'm an old man now, but, uh, <laughs> you know, no, it was, uh, it was kind of a changeover because I started, like many of us, I started in retail. I was selling synthesizers mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, and it kind of wiggled its way around. I got into selling Apple computers when I was younger, out of uh, the music retail, and then into, uh, I, I did a stint at Waves, which was here in my hometown, and uh, then straight into Sound Toys, and I've been here forever. So it's it's kind of a weird pathway, but it's, it's fantastic because I don't get a lot of the stress. And, you know, if I was a great remixer, I think I've said this in most of my demos, if I was a great re remixer, I'd be remixing, but I'm a sound designer and I, I do presets and stuff for uh, the plugins. So um, what I'm trying to do is give everybody some ideas. So the great remixer will go, Ooh, I, I'm going to go use that in my track, but not crazy like he did it. But you know, that's right. what I'm, that's what I'm after. I want to, I want to make people think about our products and and that's really so. interesting because in a way, Mitch, I mean, you have, and people like you have a profound impact on where music production ends up going because you are dropping these seeds, giving people hints that can create like the sounds of the future because new sounds like, like a lot of the sound toy stuff originally came out of the H3000 that, um, you know, Ken, the owner of the company was instrumental in designing and it changed the sound of music production for decades. So people sure. in those support roles can have a huge, tremendous impact on not just the music productions that they work on, but so many music productions that countless others do. So there's so many ways to have an impact. Um, and it's interesting, you know, the support side of the industry is even bigger potentially than the, you know, a-list and even B-list and C-list producer side of the industry, uh, in part because we're serving all those people who are doing stuff at a high level, but we're also serving hobbyists who, in my opinion, their output is just as important, right? Because like no music ever matters as much to you as the music that you make, you know? <laughs> and to play like a little role um, of that in other people's lives. I mean, that's huge. You're improving people's lives through music by helping them realize their goals. And you also still get to work on your goals. M Mitch does his own music productions. If you want to check out his band, what's your band called where they can look you up? Synthetic Things. Synthetic Things. So, so you got the 80s new wave thing is still going on in my brain. So just be aware. It's not for everybody, but uh, it's fun. <laughs> we, uh, well, we have lots of fun. Mitch, uh, definitely check him out. Still living the dream and uh, making enough money to have a, a whole bunch of nice synthesizers behind yeah, him. So yeah, so to answer that question, right. yes, you, it is possible to get a career in the music industry as wide as it is. And I mean, the, the honest truth of it is you and I, we, we're, uh, we're working in this industry that's hurting badly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, there, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you don't necessarily think about from rock star to you know, roadie <laughs> and, and right. all the stuff in between. So Ooh, the live industry really decimated right now. That's a whole Bad. other conversation for another day, but fingers crossed yeah. for people who are working primarily in live. All right. This was a, a nice foray into an unusual topic for this kind of workshop. It was fun anyway, you know, yeah. deep thoughts with Mitch and Justin. We should have a show. Hey, we do have a show. We're doing it right now. We do have okay. a show. Next question. We got some more sound toy specific ones. Mm. A whole bunch of them came in while we were talking. Guys, type more questions down below. Louis Misfit asks, Excuse me. Best sound toys plugin for vocals. Mitch, do you have a vote? Oh gosh. Well, I mean, it depends on what kind of vocal you're trying to do. So little altar boy is fantastic for doing some change up stuff, even some subtle things. It mm -hmm. can be very drastic. It can be crazy. It does its little vocoder thingy. Uh, for me, mine probably is echo boy. Cause it's yeah. just kind of a, it's on every vocal in some way or another yeah. to give it that spice. Uh, uh, CQ, uh, our little uh, EQ plugin is great for adding air to vocals. A lot of people don't uh, haven't caught onto that yet, but man, it's it's really like the air plugin. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of them. I, I think uh, you know, again, Mr. Pensado says he uses it on vocals. He uses Devil it on Lock. everything. So yeah, yeah. Devilog. So it's yeah. nasty, and and I use it on my vocals because I can't sing. So <laughs> I want to crush them and crunch them and make them something else. Yes. But, uh, yeah. 
Uh, I think I would agree. Echo Boy, you got to put number one for vocals. It just would come up the most often. Um, I would also throw out Decapitator there in the same way mm -hmm. that Mr. Punzato yeah. might use Devil Lock, um, you know, for a little bit of saturation on a vocal. Yeah. And I like that idea of uh, Psy uh, Q. Is it Psy Q or CQ? CQ. 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 It's, a, maybe it's, technically, it's technically ZQ because ZQ. it's Siemens. It's a German company. That's how the Germans would say it. Then. Yes, and they they and it's back and forth. So even in their videos, it's uh, Siemens or or Siemens or so. We're like, okay, we no one knows how to say it. Yeah, the mystery. But we say CQ. So <laughs> good stuff. All right, Sound in the City asks, you can only use three Sound Toys plugins. Which ones do you choose, and why? Sheesh, and that's <clears throat> that's tough because I really, as you well know, use them oh. all. Yeah. all the time yeah. if i had to pick three absolutely echo boy i get so much work done with echo boy now could cheat and say effect rack ha! yeah uh, if i because it is a plugin one plugin it yeah. is one plugin and you get so. 14 and one with that answer that's such a good answer get yeah, effect so. rack you get 14 and one uh so but to do individuals it would be echo boy for sure uh i get a lot of work done with filter freak uh from uh, sweeps and effects to using it as a dynamic EQ, to using it to notch stuff out, uh, to adding a little grit and grind and squash and whatever. So that would be on the list. Uh, the third plugin, man, that's gonna be tough to go. I, golly. In my stuff, I would probably have to go with Crystallizer because I just really like uh, yeah. the wide variety of interesting things you can do with it. So Right. And, and the answers are going to change so much depending on what kind of stuff you do with the kind of stuff you do, Mitch. Yeah. So sound designy and work right. on so many synths, things like Filter Freak, uh, Crystallizer, Phase Mistress make so much sense. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm mastering these days, but if I was mixing, I mean, the things that I would go for would be Echo Boy would definitely be in the top three, Devil Lock, and mm -hmm probably decapitator like for general yeah. mixing for like hey you're mixing you're not sound designing and you want the things you're gonna use the most those might be it but if you're like hey i do a ton of synths and want to like go super sound designy the answers are so so different yeah mixing i it would be echo boy decapitator and probably cq just because i right. it, it's just a turn to but i don't know i can get a lot of eq stuff done with uh, decapitator too so uh mm -hmm. It might go back to something like a, a second delay primal tap or something. I, I, it's tough. It's there's because I can't give up any of my children. I don't. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. Now this is an interesting one from Vincenzo Sicarella. I hope I'm saying it right, Vincenzo. What's your favorite <laughs> unintended use of a sound toys plugin? Oh. Are there unintended uses of sound toys plugins? Didn't like not, not for me. I can't. Right? <laughs> no, I uh, I. Uh, Oh man, what would I say to that? I will tell you what that is. That is um, using um, crystallizer with a really tight uh, splice gives you this crazy ring mod sound. And it's just not something you would normally go, that's what I'm after is this kind of disgusting thing, but it's really fun to, to automate in that area. I think I showed a trick on that on YouTube. It's called, uh, uh, crystal beats, I think, where I've mm. done this weird thing to drums, uh, and it's very cool. I don't know that it was ever intended to do that, but I like it. Good stuff. All right. Uh, let's keep on going here. And Nate Evans asks, are there any future plans to make a bigger version of Little Plate or Little Alter Boy, i.e. Plate Alter Boy? P.S. Little Alter Boy is my favorite plugin of all time. Hmm. Uh, well, thank you for uh, loving the little altar boy. Um, there are all kinds of plans constantly churning in the sound choice factory. So we have absolutely considered those options. Uh, I don't know what kind of timing could happen on those, but yes, I will say yes, those are being considered. Both yes, of those I would are. say that any sound choice plugin that comes out with the name little in front of it, there's at least the intent or thought of making right. it non-little. Otherwise, they wouldn't put little in there. Right. Um, that's my guess. That is exactly true. Yeah. All right. Um, another question here from Alex Mim. Curious to hear suggestions for live drum treatment and mixing beyond the obvious greats of Devil Lock. Anything under the hood of plugins that you don't think are used or known often enough on drums? 
Uh, well, we'll go back to CQ again, the air, and you have to be careful, of course, in live, because you could get some highs that could kill everyone. But uh, uh, apart from that, you can get some air that you might uh, not get uh, with other EQs on live. And, and I am not a live mixer, so don't, you know, take this as uh, gospel. But uh, so uh, CQ, Devil Lock, when Decapitator. When he says live drum treatment, I'm guessing he means like drums that were in performed the, live but recorded is my guess. Oh, in the studio. So, okay. So, so, all right. We'll go the other route then. Yeah. I mean, uh, CQ for sure, because you can uh, get some of that room air that you can't necessarily hear. Mm -hmm. uh, the, there's uh, obviously Decapitator is a go to for so yeah. many people in mixing and, and parallel uh, distortion kind of thing going on with, uh, with the mix knob. Um, could you use the Echo Boy without any echo, with like a delay time of zero milliseconds and 100% wet, and use it as kind of like a lo-fi, like tape simulator kind of thing? Uh, to yeah, more than that, we uh, a lot of folks have used it. I know uh, Trent Reznor is a huge fan of using it just as a saturator. Right. It's really great. I mean, there's a tiny bit of delay in it, just inherent in the fact of our uh, modeling kind of has that. So you mm -hmm. you if you're full wet, you're totally cool. Uh, you can compensate for that pretty easily. Uh, but it's a great sound. It's an amazing sound. I mean, there were a lot of classic pieces of gear uh, modeled in that unit. So uh, you can, and you can drive the input, you can drive the output and you can turn the saturation up so you can get lots of colors from, from doing that with Echo Boy. Um, <clears throat> there's also, um, what was I going to say? It was uh, something really cool, I bet. I'm going to throw a radiator out there uh, for kind of like a more retro kind of thing. If you're yep. in like the, the dap tone mood and you're going uh, two decades earlier than what uh, Mitch usually likes to, to play him with <laughs> more sixties and stuff. I, I think radiator is cool for that kind of stuff. Well, and again, it's all a style. A primal tap is awesome for dub stuff, uh, even on drums. So you get that cool little uh, slap back thing going on. Um, there's, I mean, pretty much everything's got a spot in there. Uh, depending on what style you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. All right, let's keep on going here. William St. Laurent asks, just got myself the radiator and it sounds amazing. Any tips on how to use it and what it sounds best on? Uh, for me, it, it, because of where it comes from, I mean, that's the original unit that was in the Motown studios. Uh, so that EQ is something we've heard a bajillion times. Uh, I have a tendency to way overdo it. So don't mm -hmm. take this again as gospel, uh, uh, but cranking up the bass and the treble uh, too much is fantastic on bass guitar. It's yeah. one of my favorite sounds on bass guitar ever. And that's mm -hmm. even just the EQ, no drive, no nothing else. And it just seems to fit dead in a mix like all those great Motown hits. So. Totally. That's where yeah. I mostly use it. Same things when I was using Radiator a lot when it first came out. Um, I definitely love things like kick and bass and also vocals, background vocals. Um, definitely found it a lot in those kind of things. Probably not the kind of thing you'd put on like a mix bus treatment. I think there's a little too much character unless you were going, trying to go like intentionally super retro, but um, yeah. also could use it in parallel on a lot of things. I know the Motown guys themselves did a lot of parallel processing on vocals back in the Dizzy. They would use do like hyper compressed uh really bright parallel vocals and kind of bring those up and that was a uh, a motown mixing trick from back in the day i don't i've I never know. done that with a radiator but it sounds like fertile ground i know the black keys had a custom mixer their whole mixer was designed based on those pre's and so oh. the their sound was full on sweet uh, yeah so good stuff all right uh going a little further here um i'm not how, sure how to pronounce your handle i'm gonna try worthless worthless oh it says worthless for a second i thought i said worcestershire um <laughs> i've heard Fall several back. people use decapitator for the smooth tone knob alone any thoughts on this subject absolutely um and there's the tone knob is sweet it's a basically a, a tilt style eq um, thing that's going on there so you can you know balance your eq out and then you can roll off either end if it's getting too much one way or the other so very simplistic eq but fantastically flexible um i know uh, who was it ryan hewitt uh mm -hmm. has uh, said many times he uses it strictly at, for the eq with no drive whatsoever because the decisions are easy <laughs> and easy decisions and mixing are really important. 
Yeah. One of the things I do love about the sound toys stuff is how simple some of the plugins are and how incredibly deep others of the plugins are. But even the incredible deep ones, I'm looking at you, Echo Boy, but not just Echo Boy, you know, Tremolator and Phase Mistress and other stuff. Even the incredibly deep stuff can be so simple to use. You don't have to necessarily futz around with a million things. You can get cool sounds just like immediately. Um, so the really, really deep ones are easy to use on the surface and then insanely deep under the hood. And there's so many things that people own them for years and they're like, oh, Echo Boy can do that. We actually got a comment like that just today. Um, and then some of them are just so stupidly easy. I mean, you're talking about Little Plate, talking about Radiator, talking about Devil Lock. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I love that stuff. Isabella Johansson says, I like the strength of the combination of plugins in the effect rack. Happy I picked it up a couple of days ago. Awesome. And she has an emoji of a kitten in a box. So that is how, that's probably how I would feel if I bought a new sound toys plug and I would feel like I just took a kitten out of a box. So I get that. <laughs> Thank you, Isabella, for, for joining and sharing your emojis and thoughts with us. Next, Sonny Brasco. He says, hey guys. Hey, Sonny. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, Justin. In what way would you use decapitator to enhance bass? I'm always hearing of this and I've tried it in the mix, but I'd like your guys' thoughts. Also, on vocals. So thoughts on how to use decapitator on bass first and foremost, and also vocals. Well, uh, I probably defer to you on that one because you are mix man and I am sound design man. So for me, I mean, um, uh, I know a lot of people in the industry and they all say I use decapitator constantly on vocals. It's always there. I know most people, apart from uh, some extreme folks, uh, use it very, very subtly. Yes. It's just the extra little bit of warmth. There's some minor harmonic things going on that fit when you know how to dial it in. I personally am uh, not one of those dial in guys for the mix on vocals and things, but uh, yeah, I know, I know it's on all of them. Mitch doesn't like to do subtle. <laughs> I don't do subtle <laughs> <laughs> at all. I'm not a subtle dude. Uh, yeah. And that's why I'm not a pro mix engineer. There you go. He would get bored. <laughs> what do you mean I can't completely reinvent your drum pattern with delay? That's there's, what I do. There's eight more numbers there. Why are you just using <laughs> one? <laughs> right. Um, well, uh, I will give you general thoughts on this and the way a lot of people would use these things on bass and vocals. I would say parallel is your friend, but you can do stuff that is, Decapitator has a wet dry knob, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can do uh, parallel right in on the plugin itself. Mm -hmm. um, and that would generally be how most people are going to use saturation most effectively. I mean, there's two ways to use saturation. One, you put on a saturator that's fairly subtle and just let it ride. And that might be, you know, like conventional tape saturator or decapitator just dialed in a little bit and people will do that. But the way that I think people will often have the best results using saturation and specifically on bass is to think about in parallel. So one of the big things about bass is actually in getting bass heard, it's not necessarily about the low frequencies. It's about the mid range. And if you can get the mid range of the bass to speak properly, you're going to hear that bass line on any speakers. So that is where the real audible range of the bass is. It's the stuff, you know, say from somewhat ugly sounding stuff on its own from like 700 to 2k or something like that, that area and getting a little bit of hair on those area, that area can be helpful. The problem is once you start adding saturation and distortion to a full range thing, like a bass, some of that saturation and distortion might not be appropriate on the lowest frequencies. And this is why a lot of people who mix bass will sometimes malt out the bass um, so that maybe you have a somewhat thinner, um, brighter malt of the bass. It has a lot of saturation and you're mixing that up on top of the raw bass and you're kind of adding that into taste. So it's almost like you have two faders, your main bass fader plus a distorted edgy bass fader to kind of make it poke through in the mix more in general. And that's the way that I'm inclined to use any type of thing on bass, uh, including decapitator. Uh, with vocals, again, for saturation, there's two ways to look at it. One is special effect, and that is just let the saturator ride. We're going for distorted vocals. We're going for distorted bass. But the other way is to think about having a, a parallel fader that you're bringing up of here's our main vocals or main bass, and here's our treated vocals or treated bass that's a little bit more saturated. Maybe it's band limited, and maybe you're tucking it in. That's the way so many people would use saturation in the mix. 
Last thing I would say as a quick note is that one of the most effective ways to use saturation, I think, is to start unsubtle. Use way too much. Dial in a saturation sound that just sounds cool, where it's like, if we were going to go distorted, this is the right distortion sound. And then tuck it back, like way back. And I think that's helpful is when you're selecting your distortion sound, do it loud, do it too much, and then tuck it back. And I think that's a, a generally a good approach to it. Yeah, and that has been uh, there. Do you want to go? On? Yeah, yeah, and that that was one of the things that I learned from real mix engineer, engineers like yourself was uh, get something cool that's sort of maybe over the top, turn the mix to full on dry, and then just start tweaking it in a little bit at a time. And when you yeah. think you hear it, you probably need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was, you know, on, on snare drums and things like that. And it's similar to the trick I was showing on the synthesizer earlier, where you're adding in just a little bit of that high end fuzz with the decapitator behind the actual synth helps yeah. kind of bring that edge out and give it that old school vibe. That yeah. was kind of those, uh, I hate to use the word fizzy, but sizzly kind of old school synth that is sort of missing from most of the new stuff, but not all of them. So yeah. anyway, yeah. Good stuff. No, great observations, man. Uh, let's keep on going here. Um, Umoraka official says, I want his synths. Well, get in line. <laughs> They're all currently available from the various folks who make them. <laughs> None of these are old school vintage synths. No, see, I'm good. I'm one of those guys who is like, I can't really afford to fix old synths. Yes. So I was about I to get, say. Yeah. I get new synths that don't need to be fixed. I and like so. synths that aren't broken. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I would love to be that guy, but I am not that guy. And there's so many great scents out there now. It's yeah. amazing. I'm I'm totally in love with my Pro 3 back there on the top. Uh, uh, and... you know, my, my brother has a Jupiter 8. And, mm. you know, in the time that he's owned it, the price has gone up many thousands of dollars. Has the price gone up more than the amount he's put in to fix it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not it's sure. tough. Yeah, so. All right. Um, Sebastian Garcia Ferro asks, what new plugin would you like to produce? And what other third party plugins do you respect? Mm, well, uh, new plugins that Soundtweet could produce. Let's see. Um, God, there's so many on the list. There's so many I've thought about over the many years that I've been here. Um, uh, and we, there's so you, many that they probably don't want you to talk about if they're on the list. And then if you say something specifically because it's not on the list, then they know it's not on the list. So that's a hard one to answer. Why don't we well, go for the second one, of, uh, unless you have a good answer to this one? No, the good answer is, as, as you could probably guess, I would love to see a synth. Yes. So right. uh, do, do we need another synth? Yes. We do. <laughs> it's always the answer. So, yeah. So, uh, so that would be my answer easily. Um, in terms of uh, other plugins that I respect, there's just so many. I mean, there's a there's a lot of great folks out there making plugins. As I mentioned earlier, I I did a stint with Waves, and obviously with the enormous catalog that they have, there are so many good things in there. Uh, Isotope does great stuff. Uh, as far as synths go, I'm a huge fan of Arturia stuff. Sure. Uh, uh, I've got the Roland Cloud stuff, which is stunning, um, uh, and, and and right down my alley. <laughs> so all those classic old synths I don't have to fix. Uh, <laughs> so uh, and in terms, uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's there's several. Oh, um, uh, the UA stuff. I've been really getting into some of their things recently, and 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 quite pleased with it. So it's it just you know. There's so much stuff out there. You grab a company that seems to be really stable and, and on their game and you uh, you hang with them for a while. Yeah. I will give you my perspective from who gives the best swag of plug-in companies in the audio <laughs> industry. So Sound Toys is way up there. This is my Sound Toys hoodie. I've owned this particular Sound Toys hoodie. It's still, it's still in good condition. Uh, this is 2020 now. I probably got this hoodie in 2015, 2016. Um, my daughter was born when I was wearing this hoodie. I was wearing this hoodie when my daughter was born. I'm wearing it today. Um, so they have some of the top quality swag. If you ever go to a trade shoe, go to Mitch and say, hey, can I have a t-shirt? Because they're always just supple material. And they are neck and neck with my other favorite for swag is Universal Audio. And they always have just great quality t-shirts, great designs. And also um, Isotope usually has good quality t-shirts. And all three of those, some of my favorite plug-in companies have some of the best swag in the business. Is this um, an accident? 
I don't know. I don't think so. No. I think people who have taste have taste all around. It's so a, it's a creative vibe, you know, everybody wants to keep it creative across the board. So yeah. yeah. One of my it, other favorite plugin companies is plugin Alliance. They make absolutely some of my favorite yeah. stuff that I use in mastering constantly. And some of my favorite stuff that is universal audio is actually designed by Brainworks, but they don't necessarily tell you that, but I have not yet had a piece of swag from plugin Alliance. So I can't, I can't speak to you. <laughs> but I do well, think you guys should have a swag store. All plugin companies should have a swag store. It's like, gosh, buy, and if you buy like, 20 plugins you get this shirt or something i don't know this is just I've me thinking fought, of i fought for that for so many years it's I, it's it's so funny because i almost every video i've ever put out one of the second third fourth fifth comments is how do i get that t-shirt you guys are leaving money on the table i know and just walk around advertising gosh all right okay let's uh keep on going here uh sound in the city says good answers mitch and sonic scoop nice try on sneaking in the rack um <laughs> vincenzo sicarella said justin you said right mitch nice answer haven't tried before okay kale mauser says are there any plans for incorporating oversampling options on the sound toys plugins uh you know, there uh, hmm, that's a that's a good question because we have debated those things there's a lot of um mojo around oversampling i'm not the code guy so i couldn't tell you exactly why or why not i've never had any issues with saying i need oversampling and i'm an over kind of guy but uh <laughs> uh yeah i mean we we've discussed those options and uh i think if our code team who are all musicians so they're very in tune with it when if they decide that something we really, really need, it will get done. Gotcha. Um, Assuming it's not done already. Is it done? Who no. knows? Secret. <laughs> Isabella Johansson says that the uh, name for the larger altar boy, when you d guys do come out with a larger altar boy, should be altar man. Altar man. Well, altar yeah. Man. I could get behind that. I could get behind that. Uh, <laughs> Sound in the City asks, did, does, CQ come with a bundle, need to look. I think, well, everything comes yeah. with the Sound yeah. Toys 5 bundle. Yeah, yeah. The but does it come in area. effects rack is maybe the question. I don't think it comes it, in. No, it does come in effects It does rack. come in effects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep on going here. Um, this is an easy one, but I'll let you knock it out of the park. Nate Evans asks, what's a good Sound Toys plugin for a flanger kind of sound? Well, there's actually a couple. Um, Echo Boy does some pretty amazing flanging, uh, but so does Primal Tap. I'm um, actually Primal Tap does some of my favorite flanging sounds uh, in our bundle. I actually ended up turning to it most of the time over Echo Boy once it came to life. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, let's keep on going here. Um, I just lost my place. I apologize. Uh, Styrofoam Ghost says, I'm always looking for good reverb since I'm a post-rock type of musician, so I like it nice and thick. Any Sound Toys plugins that have a reverb that I would feel like I have to have? Well, the, the easy one is Little Plate, which is yep. a great classic. It's one of the reverbs used on a ton of 70s-ish rock stuff and beyond uh, with the 140. So uh, uh, you've yep. heard it a bajillion times. But if you want to get more complex, then that's effect rack. And there's already some great presets made uh, stacking up delays and diffuse delays with Echo Boy. Uh, nice. there, there's some amazing uh, uh, presets in there and being able to modulate those with things like Phase Mistress in the background to get those cool sweeps, the Steve Miller-ish, you know, kind of rock vibe reverbs with some mod on them. That's, uh, that's an effect rack. I use it all the time for reverbs. Yeah. And there was an answer uh, right below that from Andre Erlmeyer. I hope I'm saying it right, Andre, who says Echo Boy can do it all. So yeah, you can get reverby sounds out of Echo Boy. And then especially when you're stacking additional stuff on it. And I think um, a lot of people, as they mature in their mixing game, start to use reverb less and start to use delay more. And they often find like, oh, things I thought I needed to do with reverb actually happen better with delay. And that's a realization a lot of mixers come in uh, to as, as they go along in, in their craft. No doubt, because, you know, it, with a delay, you end up with some space yeah. instead of a wash. And yeah. a lot of times you don't want to fill those gaps. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, Motorcycle Traveler asks, is the CPU taxed less if you use multiple plugins inside of the rack as opposed to multiple plugins on your strip? Or is it pretty much the same either way? Same. It's uh, the, uh, the CPU usage is, is identical, pretty much latency and all those things. It's the rack is mainly to give you access to things quickly, conveniently to increase your workflow. And the other added advantage uh, of having the rack is you can cross over between host apps with no, you know, cause you can, the presets come up and whatever hosts are, if you're working in multiple apps like Jimmy did, Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, from Ableton to Pro Tools, you can still use the same preset. So that's really nice. Now, in case you didn't get that reference, Jimmy Douglas, he did a sponsored by Mixcon, uh, sponsored by Sound Toys, Mixcon Masterclass. You can check that out. Uh, it's actually will be in the show notes for this Q and A, uh, or just type in Jimmy Douglas Sound Toys, Jimmy Douglas Mixcon into uh, the search box here on YouTube, and you'll see that. Got to check it out if you haven't already. Mm. Really amazing. He starts out the mix yeah. completely in Ableton using basically Ableton stock plugins and then he takes over to pro tools and he uses a ton of sound toys plugins on there there's phase mistress on like every other track there's uh you see some decapitator in there you see a uh, little plate in there you see altar boy in there so a lot of cool stuff yeah. all right uh let's keep on going here um michael duff says i'm a bit behind so i'm on the plugin for vocals question don't forget about micro shift um uh, i yeah, guess absolutely yeah all right uh, yeah i mean a good one for vocals yes got it yeah, I, I typically use it on backing vocals, but I have absolutely use it on lead vocals. It's uh, we mentioned earlier, I'm kind of stuck in the 80s. So that's very much an 80s sound when you mix it into a lead vocal. Hmm. All right. Um, Andre Earlmeyer says Jupiter 8 is magic. Sound in the city says rolling cloud, cloud is good. I got that one, too. Uh, Steve O'Hear. Great name for someone in the audio business. Steve O'Hear. Echo Boy can be used as a chorus which chorus setting is true stereo? Hmm, let me see if I can reread this. Echo Boy can be used as a chorus. Which chorus setting, I guess in Echo Boy, is true stereo? I ask because a lot of analog choruses are fake stereo, either one side dry, one side wet, or a lot of horrible phase inversion. Do you have, can you kind of make sense of that question? I guess what he's saying is that there's the advice that a lot of people get where, hey, if you get stereo sources, most of them aren't true stereo, and there's probably just some phasey stuff going on. So throw one side away and, you know, just use it in mono. So that's advice that people will get when, say, you're coming out of like a synth left and right. A lot of people give the advice of, ah, that's not really a left and right output. They're just putting some weird modulation-y stuff on either side. And throw out one side, and you'll get a more dry, direct keyboard sound that way. Well, uh, it if it's a stereo input into Echo Boy, it's a stereo, true stereo output. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think there's any exceptions to that. Um, but absolutely, if you choose the dual mode, you're using separate delays for kind of separate sides. So yeah. that, that should also be full on true stereo. So that's an interesting mm -hmm. question. I hadn't really thought about it, but I, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any spots where Echo Boy sums if it's a stereo input. So right. it should be safe across the board. Okay, I hope that answers the, the question, Steve. Uh, William St. Laurent asks, any tips on how to deal with a heavy piano slash synth production as far as panning uh, and EQ go? That was outside of mine, but... Uh... <laughs> um, panning, good question. I mean, the, the advice I always give people on panning just in general is start with LCR and then adjust from there. LCR meaning left, center, right. So a, a lot of big mixers kind of do this as well. It's one of those things where LCR basically means go big with your panning or go home. Take a sound and either you pan it down the center or you pan 100% left or 100% right. And I don't mean this as a rule, like only ever do this, but it's one of those things where it's like, start there. And then if it's really not working, tuck things in. And it also makes you think, um, like more concretely about how things should be panned. Because if you pan like one thing to the far left and it's a bright banjo, and on the far right, you have a um, really dark organ, they're probably not gonna sound good that way, right? So you're probably either A, making mistake there because more things should be panned to balance that stuff out. So something else bright should go on that organ side to balance out the bright banjo on the other side, or maybe one or more of those should be in the center. 
Um, I find that a lot of people, when they're first starting mixing, they try a lot with like, oh, let me pan this 12 degrees to the left or 12 degrees to the right. And you have all these things that just aren't quite centered. And it sounds weird. And the sound of a lot of big pop mixes is really cool, tight center, like 100%, like really centered center stuff. But then it sounds so wide. And that's really what people are trying to get most of the time. So a great starting point is left, center, right. So that idea of and also, like if you had like five different synths, one way to approach it is instead of getting the kind of fake stereo, this is where that advice comes in, where people say throw away one side, instead of getting a kind of fakey modulated stereo and you have all of these kind of stereo, kind of not synths that are all panned hard left and right, on a bunch of them, you can get rid of one side. So you just have, say, the left side of every one of these synths and then pan some of them hard left and hard right. And if you have two balanced synths that are panned hard left and hard right, that's gonna sound way wider than two stereo synths that are both panned 100% left and 100% right. So I think that's a way to think about it is you can get wider stereo sound sometimes by not relying on stereo synths, but instead having juxtaposed mono synths that are panned way out from each other. Um, and I think that's an approach that again, a lot of people um, as they develop in their careers pick up more and more. These are not just my mixing tips. They're mixing tips that I've come, whenever I say this stuff, it's stuff that I've, like, I've spent the last 10 years interviewing like all of my mixing heroes uh, and then trying to tie together the common threads. And these are some of the things that come up again and again and again. I have a full length course about those ideas called mixing breakthroughs, but there's a totally free thing called the five habits of truly great mixers where I get into a lot of this stuff. So you might want to check that out. Uh, that is the, the totally free workshop is sonicscoop.com slash mix habits. And that's one of them in there. Um, but anyway, I could I keep on going. This is about sound toys, not about how every mixer who I respect does things. It's okay. um, Throw echo boy on it. Yes, but that's one of the things that every <laughs> mixer I respect does is they throw Echo Boy on things. Okay, <laughs> let's keep on going here. Um, <clears throat> Sound in the City says, I've got some Sound Toys guitar picks and pins. I'm jealous because I don't have any Sound Toys picks. I want oh, some. Next time man. I see you at a trade show. Yeah, we should have. I got a yeah. handful of picks and throw them at you. Um, Fabrice uh, says, I'm jealous that he has the original t shirt uh, with the, the Sound Toys logo. Um, it's a perk. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> it, it, sometimes the scrolling is jumping around on me, so I apologize. Avid has beanies and water bottles. Well, we gotta we gotta get on this and and create the sound toy store. And we Seth had Flitter, water bottles. We had the De uh, Devil Log Deluxe Red Water Bottle. So, oh, cool! I, I want that. Oh wait, Seth, hang on. Oh, you're gonna find it? No, no. This is look. Ah. Oh, I have one of those. Yeah. Yes. Those are great. Metal. Metal. <laughs> yes. It's real like uh, aluminum or something. <laughs> Seth Flinner says, my daughter, oh, he's quoting me, quote, my daughter was born while I was wearing this hoodie. I was wearing this hoodie when my daughter was born. She was born while I was wearing this hoodie. <laughs> That's a very good me impression. Yeah. Do I ever say anything without saying it three times? I don't know. That's, do that's I? Okay. Do that's I good. say things without saying it three times? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, anyway, moving on. I also have a picture of my daughter wearing this hoodie as well. And she looks like a total cross between a Jedi and a Jawa. So it's yeah. uh, pretty good because it's about um, taller than her. Uh, At least it wasn't a Dementor. That's the thing you want to stay away from. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Let's see. Fabrice always wonders if the 1999 t-shirt is better than the 2020 t-shirt. Mage Prometheus says, I ordered some cardboard boxes that included fancy tea bags. I have no idea what we're talking about now. Uh, <laughs> Seth Linder says it must be one damn comfy hoodie. Okay, please say yes, TV he says best soft clipper in the bundle. I have the whole thing. What's the best for soft clipping? Oh boy. Uh, I again, soft is not my area. I, Decapitator as yeah. hard as it can yeah. be, can do soft. Yeah, I mean that that's the kind of scope when we first put out decapitator, we had, you know, the people who would just do the crushing effect that you would think of decapitator. But then we had a whole team of people who were like, I, I want something that's less than zero. Cause I normally use zero to just below one super subtle. There are things going on there. Uh, and the better ears than mine can hear them. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's prob that's probably one of the best. I mean, all of them, practically every one of our plugins has some type of 
saturation going on. Uh, it's something we didn't really discuss uh, earlier, uh, but uh, like even in the Tremolator and Pan Man, there's, or, or Tremolator and Filter Freak, there's being able to drive that analog mode in several different flavors. So uh, you might find one there as well, depending on if you already have them or not. So. Good stuff. Well, this was advertised as a 30 minute Q&A and we are 45 <laughs> minutes in. So mm. uh, Mitch is a busy guy. He's got sound effects to design. So we want to do lightning round here so right. uh, we can get him on to his other things. But thank you so much for being here, Mitch. This is just great answers. Hey. A lot of fun here. Um, fun. Let's uh, keep on going uh, with lightning round. So we're going to try to be as fast as possible with lightning round. I should have some type of sound effect for this. Lightning round. Okay. Um, what about side chaining? Asks David Gilden. What about it? Are there side chain inputs in the Sound Toys plugins? There aren't currently. Uh, we well, there's some internal side chaining things, of course, uh, in several of them. But uh, you know, being able to side chain from an external audio track or something, we don't have that yet. It's uh, something that's been sort of in the works for a while. And one of the things that was holding us back was, you know, all the platforms that we support between AAX and BSD and, and audio units uh, and, and that sort of thing was making sure that they all worked in some sort of uniform way. So mm -hmm. uh, that may, maybe that's coming. Um, all right. It sounds like a good ambiguous? feature request. Thanks for making the request. Yeah. Let's uh, keep on going. Ursa Records asks, now we're getting the hardball questions, that one. And now, why don't all the effects appear in the effects rack? So I guess, why uh, is it 14 curated effects rather than the, do, why do you guys have like 30 effects uh, now? So it's not quite all of them. I can tell you exactly why. Uh, several of them don't appear because they're the little versions of bigger things. So they're covered. Uh, a couple of them don't appear because we were working out um, the right way to put them into the rack. Like little altar boy is not in there because there was a latency thing that was just a little weird um, because it takes some time to pitch detect. And uh, we wanted to make sure we got that nice and smooth little plates, not in there because, well, we just, you know, we were looking at what to do <laughs> with it inside the rack. So uh, the, these things may happen in the future. I, I just don't know. I also, it's nice that you guys have a lower cost alternative to the Sound Toys 5 bundle because the Sound Toys 5 bundle run you, what, four to $500, something like that. And FX mm -hmm. Rack is like through, is like 500-ish for the Sound Toys 5? Yes. Yeah. yeah not always. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. 500-ish for Sound Toys 5 and 300-ish for um, the FX Rack, right? My yeah. ball, my yeah, ballparks I, here. You're probably right. I, I'm just the product specialist guy. Pricing. Why don't you guys look it up and tell us so I don't have to stop yeah. questions here. <laughs> he just shows you how to make them sound and he doesn't get into the pricing. All right. Yeah. Um, let's keep on going here. Just a couple more. Um, I think I'm going to have to skip a, a couple of these because we can only fit a few more in. Um, how come no compressor on the list? Technically, they do have a compressor on the list. Devilock mm. is a compressor. That mm -hmm. would be the one Sound Toys compressor so far. That's that's straightforward. There's compression stuff going on and decapitator as well because we're sure. you know those are mic pre's so that just kind of happens naturally. And also there's uh, compression going on technically in that analog mode that I was just talking about. There's a there's a uh, mode called squash which has got some pretty nice compression in it. If you uh, use tremolator with no uh, mod going, then you can hear that as well. All right, sound in the city says what I need a sound toys water bottle for the gym so I can flex my audio plugins right. all right uh last couple of things here uh i think we're pretty much done there's two more questions that i see here that i want to uh, throw at you maybe we could give um quick answers on these one okay. what are your favorite ways of using crystallizer uh well i mean uh I, I, probably as evidenced by the the, the demo i i love to turn normal moving things like a picked guitar into a pad and, and then put that back behind the original instrument. It's one of my favorite things to do. You just get that spiraling crystallizer thing going and mix it back behind the instrument. So it just gives it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of wash behind it. I love that. And then I love destroying things with backwards flipping automated crystallizer, the two extremes, kind of the subtle pretty thing and then the scary um, nutso thing. All of that sounded very, very Mitch to me. Because um, <laughs> next... you're like, what are you saying? <laughs> no, no, I know exactly what you're saying, but I'm just saying, you said extreme, pretty, and scary. I'm like, 
that sounds like what Mitch does in these uh, demos in a nutshell. Well, the, it's the perfect, uh, here, here you go. Here's the perfect thing. There's two videos out there. One's called Crystallizer Beauty and one's called Crystallizer Beast. Those two videos on our YouTube channel will show you the extremes that I like from Crystallizer. Dig it. All right, last question. Uh, Uzomi, uh, Uzoma, you're going to get the last one. Favorite letter setting on the decapitator? Uh, that would be the... Ah, that's tough. It's A or E for me because they both have a very thick kind of richness to them. Uh, so uh, yeah, that would be the two. I mean, I use them all because they all have their spot, you know, um, but uh, those are my go-tos most of the time. Good stuff. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for all these questions. If you can give your profuse thanks to Mitch in the comments down below, I know it'll bring a smile to his face. Mitch, it was so great to have you here. Always a fun time talking and hanging and uh, great to see your, your depth of knowledge on this stuff. <laughs> you guys got to check out the full workshop. If you missed it, it's right here. It's the top video on our channel right now. So check that out. I think it's called uh, creative mixing and remixing with uh, Mitch Thomas from sound toy, something along those lines. You can also check out his presentation. I believe from Mixcon it was a 2018. He did another uh, half an hour presentation in person. That was another great one. So many That's positive fun. comments on that one. Uh, so thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you, Mitch, for stopping by, sharing your wisdom and knowledge and all that stuff. If you want to try out anything that Sound Toys makes for free, where do you got to go? Soundtoys.com. Soundtoys.com. 30 days uh, free trial. On just all like you stuff. own it. All the good stuff. Yeah. You should probably just get it. And also check out the <laughs> Jimmy Douglas presentation that these yeah. guys sponsored. They've it's sponsored every, every single MixCon since we first every started in 2015. One. You guys have been yeah. sponsored on. They're a sponsor on the Bob Power episode, which last time I checked, 960,000 views on YouTube. Have any wow. of you guys seen the, the Bob Power one? If not, check it yeah, out. It's going to cross a million views very soon. It'll be our first <laughs> mixed right. on video to cross a million views. Um, so they sponsored that one. They sponsored a great one. Um, oh man, they do great ones every year. They did a great one, I think with Ario Borjo. Um, they did a great one with David Tolmy, who's worked on some amazing stuff, uh, a whole bunch of them. So check out that MixCon playlist for more great MixCon mm -hmm. videos. We love MixCon. Yep. What can we say? Yep. And MixCon loves you back, baby. And MixCon <laughs> and Mitch love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with yeah. me. This has been Justin Clay. Thanks everybody. Scoop with Mitch Thomas of Sound Toys. See you next time. See you guys. And end <laughs> there we go we should be